Hi, in this video we are going to discuss about color vision. So color vision can be asked as a short essay of 8 marks or as an answer briefly question. So first of all, when you get a question like this in the introduction, you should write what color sense is. So color sense is the ability of the eyes to discriminate between different colors. Right? It, uh, our eyes are able to see many colors. So it is that ability is called color sense and it's primarily the function of cones. You know, there are two types of photoreceptors, rods and cones and cones are responsible for the color sense. Then we can write about the theories of color vision. So the first theory of color vision is trichromatic theory or Yell-Helmholtz theory. So according to this theory, there are three kinds of cones, one for each primary color and that each of them have different photopigments which are sensitive to a particular wavelength or a particular color, particular primary color. So you know we've got red, green and blue as a primary color. So according to trichromatic theory, we've got three different cones for each of these colors. Now let's see more about these uh, cones. So the first type of cone is a blue sensitive cone which is maximally sensitive to the blue region of the electromagnetic spectrum. And because the blue region has short wavelength, they are also called S cones or short wave containing S pigment. Okay, so their maximum absorption is around 440 nanometers. Next, we have the green sensitive cone, which is maximally sensitive to this middle portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. And its maximum absorption is around 535. So that is why they are called middle wave pigment or M pigment or the cone is called the M cone. Next, we have got this red sensitive cones which are maximally sensitive to the long wavelength region of the electromagnetic spectrum. That is why they are called long wave cones containing L pigment and their maximum sensitivity is around 565 nanometer. Okay, so remember we've got three types of cones which are the blue sensitive cone, green sensitive cone and the red sensitive cones. Now for the examination, you have to draw this graph to show the maximum absorption or maximum sensitivity of these cones. So to draw this on the x-axis, you can show the wavelength ranging from 400 to 700. And on the y-axis, you can show the percentage of light absorption. So I said blue cone is maximally sensitive to 440, right? So you can draw a graph showing that it is maximum, that peak is at 440. Next, green sensitive cone is maximally sensitive to 535. So you can draw, mark that and write it as green cone. And finally, the red cone is maximally sensitive at 565. So you can draw a graph and mark it as red cone. So this diagram has to be drawn for the exam. So according to this theory, they said that the colors are interpreted as a set of ratios. So for each color, there will be different ratios. So for orange, there will be a specific percentage of red cones activated, a specific percentage of green cones and a specific percentage of blue cones activated. So like that, based on the proportion of the cones that are activated, different colors are produced. So that was according to trichromatic theory. But the problem with trichromatic theory was it could not explain why there is no greenish red or bluish yellow color and also it could not explain what is the cause of after images. So what are after images? See, suppose you look at a red object for quite some time and then quickly look at a white background you think that the same object is present in a green color. So that is known as after images. Okay, so these are, these could not be explained by trichromatic theory. So that is why they thought of another theory which is called the opponent theory or the Herring's theory. So according to this theory, they said red and green colors oppose each other and blue and yellow colors are opposed. So what does that mean? See, they said that the ganglion cells, the cells in the lateral geniculate body and cells in the visual cortex show color opponent property. Okay, so suppose there is a blue cone and suppose there is a yellow cone. Both of them will synapse onto bipolar neurons. Now then, then that information is passed on to ganglion cells, right? But when yellow cones stimulate a ganglion cell, the blue cone might be inhibiting the same ganglion cell. So that is why they are called opponent colors. So these pair of colors seem to activate opposing neural processes. That is why they are called opponent colors. Okay. So basically according to opponent theory, red and green are opponent colors and blue and yellow are opponent colors. And from ganglion cells onwards, these show color opponent property. So I hope the theories of color vision are clear. We've got a trichromatic theory showing about three cones. 
and the opponent theory which tells that these colors are opponent and that from the ganglion cell onwards they show color opponent property okay so next is the transmission and encoding of color sign signals so how are these colors transmitted so at the level of the eye we know already know that it is via these cone cells and which in turn uh, send the impulses to the ganglion cells so here we have to remember that it is specifically the p ganglion cells that are stimulated okay now from the ganglion cells it uh, the impulses pass on via the optic tract and finally they reach the lateral geniculate body so it reaches the parvocellular layer of lateral geniculate body what is this parvocellular layer see we know that in the lateral geniculate body we have got many layers six layers to be exact of which the first two layers are called the magnocellular layer and the rest four is called the parvocellular layer so color vision is a function of these last four layers which are called the parvocellular layer of lateral geniculate body okay now from the lateral geniculate body the impulses are then sent on to the cortex so which portions of the cortex are involved in color processing so see it is the the impulse from lgb are transmitted to the deep 4c layer of v1 the primary visual cortex and the blob region of the visual cortex what is meant by this blob region see in the cortex it is divided into the cortex is divided into six layers see i said from the lateral geniculate body the impulses reach the cortex right now in the cortex it the it is divided into six layers which and it also contains color blobs in it so these impulses coming from the lateral geniculate body they first enter the 4c layer of the cortex okay and it also send impulses to these color blobs and from this area it is projected onto area 58 for further processing so first see remember in the primary visual cortex it reaches the 4c segment of the cortex and it also send impulses to the uh, color blobs and then it moves on to the area uh, v8 for of the for further processing of the color vision okay so in a nutshell the cone cells uh, stimulate the p ganglion cells then its impulses to parvocellular layer of the lgb and then it uh, sends its impulses to layer 4c of v1 and the blob region and also projected to area v8 and finally you can also write uh, about color blindness and that it is tested by ishihara's chart okay so in a nutshell we have talked about the different theories of color vision trichromatic theory and opponent theory and we've also mentioned how it is transmitted and encoded uh, we've talked about the uh, cones the p cells the ganglion cells and also about the lgb and about the cortex okay so i hope this concept is clear and you know what to write for the exam thank you